I'm Dan Spindle here at KSL, interrupting Studio 5 to bring you breaking news out of West Haven. Weber County investigators giving an update on the shooting deaths of a woman and three children, a story we've been covering since late Tuesday night. Let's go there now live and listen in. Good morning. I'm Lieutenant Terrence Lavely with the Weber County Sheriff's Office. With me are Detective Dustin Stewart, who is the case agent for this case, and Detective Tyrell Hebden. Also with us are Mayor Vanderwood with West Haven City, as well as many of the family members uh, from this recent incident. Uh, in regards to the family members, they have asked to respect them and they don't want to be interviewed or on camera or photos taken of them. They have provided a statement that we'll be able to provide to you after this news conference is over. At about 10 p.m. on Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024, deputies responded to a 911 call of four people found dead in the area of 1800 South Preverdale Drive in West Haven, Utah. Deputies arrived and confirmed the four people were deceased and beyond help. Investigators from the Weber County Sheriff's Office, Weber Morgan Homicide Task Force, and Weber Metro CSI, along with other resources, were called to investigate the deaths. During the investigation, detectives identified the persons as 32-year-old Maribel Ibarra and her three children. The Sheriff's Office will not be releasing the names of the three children. Based on video evidence, physical evidence, witness statements, and interviews with family members, Detectives believe that this was a tragic incident of murder-suicide. While we have determined the cause of death for all four was gunshot wound, we do not believe that anyone else was involved in their deaths. The evidence indicates that Maribel shot her three children in the rear cargo area of her vehicle before turning the gun on herself. Our condolences go out to the family of the deceased. Our hearts also go out to the Weber County deputies, Roy City police officers, CSI, and detectives who responded to this horrific scene and continue to work this ongoing investigation. This is the second horrible child death for our agency in as many months, and this is the 11th child death scene our CSI has processed in this year. We recognize the mental and emotional toll that this takes on our people and are actively providing services to them. This is an ongoing investigation. Um, what questions can I answer for you at this time? Lieutenant, uh, several questions. You, you said that the evidence points to this being a murder-suicide. What evidence? Physical evidence from the back uh, rear of the vehicle. Can and I'm not going to go into specific? detail on that. Say what? Can you be more specific, please? I'm not going to be more specific on that. But the crime scene was contained to the rear cargo area of that vehicle. And everything leads to Maribel the one that shot her three children. And, and what about... The weapon, was the weapon recovered inside the car? It was. How many shots were fired in all here, do you know? I'm not going to release that at this time. Can you provide the ages of the kids? Four, two, and one. You said this is an ongoing investigation. If you make this determination, why is it an ongoing investigation? We obviously still have to figure out why this happened, trying to determine that, finish going through cell phone, download, uh, cell phone downloads and various different things. But we can confidently say there's no one else suspected in the death of these four individuals. And we'll continue our investigation to make sure we have a thorough investigation to say why these deaths happened. I think you referenced some, some video evidence. Can you talk a bit about how that, does that help establish the timeline and further evidence of what, what happened to Yes, it does. There was ring doorbell evidence from several different houses. I'm not going to go into great detail on all that, but it does give us a timeline when that happened and did assist us in saying why we believe Maribel is the only person involved in these deaths. Can you say what, what date did this incident happen on? We're not exactly clear on when the shots were actually fired, but it started Sunday night the 2nd into Monday morning the 3rd. Can you walk us through a timeline of what we know so far up to this point? I'm going to go into a timeline on that. That's still a part of our investigation, trying to lock down everything on what happened and putting the uh, video evidence together. So, when did, the, when did the vehicle arrive back at the house? When did it come back? I believe the vehicle was at the house the whole time. The whole time. So there were the, and what do you believe occurred? When, when did the shootings take place? Sometime Sunday night into Monday morning. 
And do the shootings happen, all the shootings happen inside that car? Yes. Are you able to discuss the way the bodies were situated in that vehicle? I'm not going to go to that part of the investigation. Did investigators look at other potential scenarios here? Obviously, we looked at every potential scenario, and the reason for this news conference is to say that our evidence says this is what happened, that it was a murder-suicide. And uh, there's, there's been discussion about a boyfriend, been discussion about maybe perhaps, you know, some issues there. To, to what degree did you look at the boyfriend? That is all part of this investigation. We did look at him. He's the father of the three children, and past that, I'm not going to say any more about the investigation. Well, he is the father of the three kids. He is. And who made that a 911 call? One of the family members at the house. Okay, so and they made the call on Tuesday? Well, Tuesday night, yes. Tuesday night, so, so that the bodies were on Monday in the car? Yes. Can you speak to the age of the children? Four, two, and one. Do you have any initial ideas of what, why this happened, what led to this tragedy? I don't know that we'll ever be, ever be able to actually answer that. Uh, Maribel would be the one to be able to answer that, and obviously we can't ask her that question. Was there anything on her cell phone that pointed to murder-suicide? I'm not going to go into that part of the investigation. Was there a note? There was no note. Gender of the kids? Say that again. The gender of boys, girls? One boy, two girls. Uh, that's all we have at this time. I do have several of the statements from the family they would like to provide to you. So you can come get those from us now. Thank you for your time. All right. You hear them wrapping up their Weber County investigators speaking of that uh, terrible tragedy in West Haven. Mary Bell Ibarra identified as the mother who they say uh, killed her children in a vehicle, then turned the weapon uh, on herself. Um, that is what we know right now. Still a lot of questions, uh, and the investigators say that the investigation that they alluded to, the, the more information that they would need to gather is the backstory effectively finding out why this happened, uh, looking into various uh, family members. But again, uh, they say a tragic case of murder-suicide there. We will have more on this and much more coming up on KSL News at noon. In just a few minutes, we hope you'll join us. KSL Plus app, download it right now to get breaking news to the palm of your hand.